Well, I'm off to a start. I'm running late. And I'm behind with the big, the first pack. But this is the beginning of the Twitter vibe. I don't even have my camera turned around, man. But this is the beginning. I'm way behind the leaders. Trying to catch up. Oh damn. Yeah, right now I'm getting smoked. Everybody passing me. Uh, riding on the trail is a lot different than riding on the pavement, I can tell you that. Uh, it's tough, but I'm gonna do my best to keep going forward. Well, man, I remember seeing this bridge in videos. And now I'm here. Man, it's obvious I'm a rookie. I'm getting passed by everybody. I took a wrong turn. I can't even hardly film because I'm going up and down these damn hills, rocks everywhere. Boy, hey, I got myself into a hell of a task. I say that. And it's a rough one. The only thing I could do now is just try to do my best, uh, which I was doing anyway. But let me tell you, this ain't no damn joke whatsoever. Oh, this is crazy. It's crazy beautiful. I remember this from other Divide videos. This is a real beauty. I'm real lucky to be here. Single track. I don't know a damn thing about single track. Never rode it before in my life. But here we go. As you can see, several people in front of me right now. I promise you, right now, Salsa, I'm not looking to be a sponsor because this bike seems so damn slow. I'm pedaling just as hard as everybody else. You can't get no damn work. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I done passed a few, but a few more than passed me. I tell you, boy, this is a hell of a race. I'm probably in like place 50th right now. I think I started out in at least about 15th. So, this ain't looking too good right now. Moving slow, baby. We're trying to move fast. With these beautiful mountains in the backdrop. And they are beautiful. Yeah, man. I'm currently doing some hiker bike. I can't lie, the Tour de Vie is beating me the hell up. And uh, a million more riders passed me. They out rode through this single track. And I can't lie, I just couldn't keep pedaling up. I had to get off and start pushing. And I'm just praying that as this race goes on, I'm strong enough to stay on my bike at all times. But this first day, going through the altitude, going through the climbing, it's quite humbling. I'm a bit embarrassed because <laughs> I said I want to win this race and I still do. But boy, I'm damn near in last place. But that's how life works sometimes. I'm going to keep going, keep believing, and keep persevering.
I tell you this, Leo Wilcox is a damn liar. She said, hey, anybody can do the tour de vibe. All you need to do is just have a decent level of fitness. No, anybody can't do the tour de vibe. This stuff is so dangerous, man. Rocks sticking out everywhere. Tree branches. It's super dangerous. You can't just come out. Well, I did it, but I just came out here. But let me tell you, anybody just can't do this. I'm gonna just let you know that right now. Don't think it, and definitely don't believe it. Love you, Leo, but you're a damn lie. Here you go. Wow. He rolling. <laughs> Holy shit. Now nah, I gotta. Go. <laughs> now nah, I gotta actually try it. Ain't this the son of a gun? Man. He got this. Man. Look here. All right. It's only one way to find out, I guess, huh? Yep. Yep. The swinging bridge. Lord have mercy. Can I can do it. We believe in you. I believe in. Yeah. Talking about some scary shit right here. Excuse my life. Yeah! Ooh, Lord have mercy. That was scary as hell. Man, that was the most dangerous damn thing I done damn near ever did, man. I, I, I'm sorry. That is super dangerous. Rocks everywhere, trees everywhere, up, down, small places to fit through. Man, boy, I'm telling you, man, when you come to the divide, you're taking a chance on your life. That was, I couldn't even film it, man, most of it, because I was just trying to live. I don't know what place I'm in. I'm probably 80th place, 100th place. I don't know, man. But I do know I'm gonna keep going, keep fighting. But damn, I don't wanna see another single track for as long as I live. Not like that. That, that was, I don't know what the hell Leo Wilcox talking about. That's straight up putting your life on the damn line. I ain't gonna lie to you. No bull crap. I have to say, I have to admit, for the first time, longer than I can remember, I'm finally tired. I think it's the mountains, maybe the thin air. I don't know. But, I found what I was looking for. I'm finally out of breath. I'm actually tired. I think I'm up close to 70 miles in. And boy, constant climbing, that single track, maybe the altitude, but, I'm finally huffing and puffing. So, we're gonna see if I'm gonna adapt or if it's gonna linger the rest of the race. Well, good thing it's still the first day, but uh, I caught a bit of a second wind, but I'm still pretty beat up. So, I've sort of recovered, you know, but still a long way to go. And uh, hope this is the beginning of me getting used to this altitude and just this whole type of racing. And I guess, plus I hadn't touched the bike in about four days. So uh, we're gonna see what the future holds. Well, <clears throat> I could be attempting to do, do something sort of crazy here. I'm gonna get ready to do something called Coco Claims, which is a long hiker bike with a lot of rocks in the middle of the night because I couldn't find anywhere to stay. So here's to me uh, getting through it in one piece. So 
This is right at the beginning of me entering the climb. And I'm not on the bike, I'm walking it. Nobody really rides this. So, here we go. So, so out from the distance, got me a good old mountain goat. Or oh deer, I don't know. But I guess he gonna show me how to get up the rest of this this hill, so. Let's go get a better look at him. I'm glad he seems to be a friendly type. There you go. I ain't gonna bother him though. I don't give a damn how friendly he looks. I just want him to let me through. Am I right, brother? Yep, we're gonna stop filming him and get by him. I don't know what, how well y'all can see this, but this is real steep. It ain't nothing but boulders. Welcome to Coco Claims. It's a hell of a task to get your bike up this mess. It went from nighttime to daytime. And I'm still here trying to get a Coco Claims. It's ridiculous. The two fine, super fine girls just zipped up past me. I think they started this morning. They zipped up past me like they was there in spite of women. I can barely talk because I'm freezing, but it was amazing. I can't lie, they were so sexy. Just being able to do that, and they probably thought I was so damn weak. <laughs> oh my God. Back to it. Man, this stuff is so dangerous. Way above my skill level. I'm still in the Coco Claims area. I've been having to walk my bike and I'm gonna be honest with you, it's more dangerous trying to get it down here than it is up here. Man, this is completely crazy. Uh, definitely end over my head on something like this. That's a pretty nice view right there. Boy, beautiful view. Had a crazy day. The Colorado wind is back. In full effect. Lord have mercy. Hey, what up, y'all? Boy, it's been a crazy day, man. I fell in the mud. Didn't get no sleep last night. Climbing, climbing cocoa claims all night. And man, the worst thing was, my bear spray fell out the bike, sprayed me right in the face. It's been a hell of a day. And it's gonna probably be a short day. Me and my guy, we try to make it to Fernie. And it's gonna be a short trip for us. Uh, me and him, been pushing and pushing. So I'm not gonna have a lot of miles a day. Which means I'm gonna have to get a lot of miles another day. But it's been a rough one, man. Let me tell you, this Twitter vibe is an ass kicker. Excuse my language. So, got a lot to make up for. And what's the crazy part is, 99% of the first part of the day, I couldn't even ride my dang bike. Cause it was so dangerous. So, here we go, man. Another day. Hey, brother. Well, back on the trail again. Day three. I'm doing terribly compared to what I thought I would be doing. I'm way in the back of the pack. Probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, yes, total two days, I only went like 150 some plus miles, so that's not good. I gotta put some major miles in today, but today it's seeming very slow because I'm climbing. So, been rough, as all the days have been so far, but gotta keep pushing, baby. The goal is Antelope Wheels. Hey guys, day four, I messed up big time. Uh, last night on day three, I thought I could finish this uh, section and I didn't get any sleep because by the time I realized I probably should sleep, the night started to freeze and I didn't think I could get my supplies out without freezing my hands and putting it, so I wouldn't have a way to put it back in the bag. So 
actually just sort of stayed up, didn't make much ground, didn't get any sleep. Day four, got a major climb to get to the border so I can get back to the good old US of A. So uh, yeah, been a bit of a disaster again. But once again, baby, the adventure continues. Uh, gotta find a way, make a way, and make it happen. Yep, been walking my bike through puddle after puddle after puddle. Uh, I could probably try to ride through it, but I already took a couple of baths and some mud puddles I already on this trip. And plus, I'm lacking a little bit of energy because I didn't eat anything this morning because I didn't plan well. I didn't realize it was, wasn't going to be a resupply for the next 40 to 50 miles. So therefore, uh, what I ate yesterday is uh, all I'm going to have the energy for, uh, is the only energy I'm going to have for the day. But hey, I'm going to be okay. I could probably stand to lose about five pounds anyway. And another one. I know y'all probably can't tell how straight down it is for a descent. But they actually want me to ride down there. I rode down half of it, but hell no. Way too many rocks. And Leia said it's not technical. She done lost her damn mind. Yeah, and people just told me I'm gonna have to worry about doing nothing like Coco Claims no more as far as climbing over damn boulders. This ain't Coco Claims, but you know what? I'm climbing over damn boulders. And you know what? It's harder, because these ain't stuck in the ground. I would say it's harder because Coco Claims is at a much, much more severe angle but just the rocks, these rocks are all loose. Thanks a lot for lying again, everybody. Man, these fools got me in the real jungle now. Look, they got me going through, man. They got me on the single track going through water. I can't even pedal this. Now look, they want me to go across here. This is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I've been going across water, but this path is a bit crazy. Well, let's see where it takes me. Man, I can't ride none of this track so far. Now I come down here, and with, I guess they want me to jump this log. Man, they lost their damn mind. I'm gonna walk this thing. Ain't gonna be no jumping. Another log right in front of me. Nah, I think we are gonna take our time on this one. Yeah, this gotta be that single track that Marie was talking about in her video last year when she did a video on the Twitter vibe about how she wasn't able to ride a lot of it because this is crazy. Roots everywhere. Tight fit. Hey, I think it's actually cool, but uh, beyond my expertise. And now we got a good old fashioned tree in the way. Boy, just keep getting better. Keeps getting better. Got a little river out here raging next to the single track. It's rolling. Hey guys, back there, that's the wall. It's a just straight up mud wall that you gotta climb up with your bike. And you can't tell from here because it's a path there. But I'm telling you, man, that is one of the biggest death traps that I've done since I've been here. This stuff is not safe, man. I I'm gonna be honest with you. You can die right here, right here. You can die. And man, God bless the Twitter vibe. It exists to overcome your fears. And believe me, man, I damn near thought, I, I was going to see Jesus, even though I knew he had my life in his hands. I'm telling you, this place ain't what you think it is. I just tell you that. Yeah, man. And you still gotta climb up. 
You probably can't tell how tall it is, but at least this part got bricks on it. The wall, you ain't gonna have no bricks, man. You have mud. It's, it's crazy. And I forgot to add, you walking up with your fully loaded bike, man, let me tell you. Man, man, then they got the nerve to have a damn tree right in the way of the path. Boy, these boys got some balls on them. This is crazy. I'ma tell you what's crazy. I just fell, scarred my leg up, trying to pick the bike up. What I showed you was the beginning of the wall. It's still going and going way on up. Man, this is crazy. Man, I can't lie. If I didn't know no better, I would think these people I literally trying to kill you, man. You're going through a damn jungle a mile high up in the sky. They got me going down to go right back up. These people have lost their damn mind. And so have I, because I'm here doing it. But I know at the end I'm gonna appreciate it, but damn. Boy, boy, boy. This is some scary stuff. Believe me. Day five, back in the good old US of A. Just started in Montana. Trying to get down to Whitefish or Columbia Falls. Need to get the bike worked on. But yesterday, man, got out of Canada. Thank you, Canada, you were great. Man, got good food last night. Got some good rest last night. Uh, I can't wait to make this metamorphosis, though. I'm gonna change this bike up. Send half of this crap that I got back to the house. Uh, lighten the load. And see if we can make a real big push, man. In the United States of America. Still don't got bear spray. So, forgot to get it. I need to get some. Uh, but hopefully, I won't need any. I can tell you that right damn well now. Welcome to Montana. Them clouds descending on that Montana mountain. Sort of majestic. A little trail, Angel Magic here, baby. Oop, I just dropped my water. But they got some water in there, some snacks right there. Uh, say, tour riders, good luck. Welcome to Montana. Thank you so much. See, I'm in my rain gear. I damn near stay in my rain gear because it seems like it's been raining a lot lately. But I got a task at hand, man. I just came off a mountain. I'm trying to go to Whitefish to get my bike fixed and hopefully get a little rest uh, in a bed. But I got to go up a whole nother mountain, man. And these mountains take a while to get up and they're pretty dangerous to come down, I'm going to be honest. But the only other choice I got is to just try to camp somewhere outside for the night when it's already wet and nasty and still have to try to get the white fish tomorrow. So, I'm gonna have to try to do the impossible and get the white fish at some time tonight or early in the morning. But that's the deal and that's what I'm going for. Boy, day five, it's the son of a gun. Yeah, so I'm trying to descend off this mountain, man, and you got this gigantic portal, man. They just, it's covering the whole road. Man, just a gigantic portal. It is ridiculous. Man, got some several more miles to get to Whitefish. I have to get out of the mountains, and man, I must be going through some type of sleep deprivation, but this gotta be the worst road, or one of the worst roads I ever rode on. I can't tell whether it's ice down here, rock, sand, but I, it's hard to even stay up. And now, I'm sort of hallucinating to where, when, they look, when I look at the street, it's like I'm looking through the street. I can't really see where the hell I'm going. Yeah, 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 so I rode all night, made it to Whitefish, and let me tell you, 
It was a challenge, but now I'm finna get something to eat, regroup, think with master plan, switch things up, baby, and hopefully have a great rest of this race. So yeah, it was a tough one, but I made it, baby. White fish. Hey guys, day six. Operation lighting the load is in full effect. I sent a ton of more stuff home. Uh, the bike is a lot lighter now, man. So uh, that was a damn good thing. I got some rest. Uh, so now, man, I'm reloaded. Oh, I got my bike changed over. It had a one by system with a derailleur on the front. Got rid of that. So now I had some better climbing abilities because like I say, everybody and their grandmother was just passing me on these hills. I wish I could have had the foresight to do it at the beginning of the race, but hey, now is a better time than never. So I'm reset. You know, I'm trying to get 200 miles down the road. I don't know if I'm gonna get there today, but I'm going to Lincoln, baby. Day six, let's see if we can turn this race around because I don't have very many miles at all. I'm like right at 400 miles. That's not good. So I'm gonna try to step the game up. Roll out, baby. And you know what? Shout out to Eva and Whitefish. Uh, she was really good to me, man. Really good to me. Stayed at her hotel, a motel rather, and uh, it was absolutely amazing. Whitefish was amazing. A lot of beautiful women. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Go to Whitefish. It's a great place. myself. I stayed in my first pit toilet last night. Basically a, a bathroom on the campground. Slept probably about an hour and a half. So now I'm going to try to make it to the next city, which is Lincoln. So uh, I finally did it, my rite of passage for the Twitter vibe. I stayed the night, well, a couple of hours in the bathroom, sleeping on the floor. So now, off to the next destination. Man, I'm in the middle of trying to get up this mountain. It's gonna be about 6,700 feet high. 
Let me tell you something, man. This mountain is kicking my butt. You know what I'm saying? It's kicking. All these mountains been working me over, but this mountain here, I've been trying to get five miles for over an hour. And it's going straight up. Boy, I'm telling you, I never thought I could get made tired. But these damn mountains here, they bring in the pain, man. So, yeah, I just got to get 1.69 more miles. And I've been stopping every 20 feet. This thing is a killer. Boy, these Rocky Mountains ain't no joke, man. It's a hell of a view. Dang. Baby, one of my dreams. I'm out here riding with the cows, baby. The cows. Yay, look at the cow. I'm out here with them. Hey, cow. How y'all doing? They ain't saying nothing. What up, my friend? Yeah. Good to see you. Hey, hey. What up, my brother? Little sister? Out here with the cows, baby. Yeah. That's how we do it. Heading to the Lincoln. Hey, hey, cow.
Well, got a little problem here. Last night, when I was sleeping in the bathroom, the floor was really cold. And I laid on my knee, on, on my right knee, but I got up this morning, I thought I was okay. But when I left after breakfast, I could barely walk. I tried to bike, a bike, still, I don't know what's wrong. But I got a long way to go to get a hotel room. And man, I gotta get that. I think that's, I think if I can do that, I can recover. There ain't no way in here I wanna quit after putting this much time into this. So, I gotta see. Usually when I ride the bike, I feel better, but it didn't make me feel better this time. So, we'll see what happens. I gotta get there first. I got a long way to go. A lot of riders been checking on me since I was hurt at the summit of the mountain. But finally, my friend Paul came and got me off the ground. I'm trying to make it to the Llama Ranch so I can see if I can make a full recovery. So I can keep my adventure going. Because I do not want to end my adventure because of an injury. So, we should be pulling up to the Llama Ranch soon. I think this is to my right, over here. I hope so. Did Lama Ranch. Thank you, God. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, y'all. Power came and got me. Oh. Hey, guys. Oh, on the verge of being on death's door yesterday. The Lama Ranch recovered me enough to where I can keep on pushing. But the bad news is, I'm gonna have two short days in a row because I have to stop in Helena. And it's only like 37 miles away. Hey guys, man, I lost two days recently thanks to me getting injured from fatigue. Uh, I had a short day two days ago had a short day yesterday, only went like 40 miles. So I'm way behind the eight ball. Today I'm trying to go from Helena to Butte. And I got up to another late start because I had to get some repairs done to the bike. Boy, I can tell you, this has definitely not been my ideal run at the Twitter Vibe. As a matter of fact, I'm looking pretty bad. Uh, at this point, I hate to say it, but I just want to cross the finish line at some point. So that's what I'm shooting for. And uh, right now, the Twitter divide is kicking my butt again on a six mile uh, uphill. So it's been pretty bad, but I'm praying and believing that it's gonna get better. So this is some of the stuff they want you to ride your bike through, right? Going uphill. I'm walking my bike right now. Now, Leo Wilcox said that this is not a technical route. Would I be damned? If all these dang rocks ain't technical, I don't know what the hell is. Cause you definitely can't ride your bike through this unless you some type of damn expert. And even an expert might have to walk this. And this is actually some of the same stuff that you have to ride down when you descending. But it's not technical, I'll be damned. Man, I, I went up a little bit more. As soon as I turn the corner, this thing gets a lot more scary. Look at this. So I'm supposed to be able to ride my bike through this, right? Down limbs. Boulders, every damn where. Oh yeah, guys. The Tour Divide 
It's just like a regular old road race. It's just on dirt. I can't even see the damn dirt for all the rocks. What is she talking about? See, this is the part of the tour divide they don't be showing you, man. See, they don't want you to see this. This the ugly side. So yeah, don't buy all that, uh, it's just like a road race crap. This ain't like no damn road race. This is some serious business, man. Okay, guys, we come to another crazy part. I'm having to hike my bike up this hill. And look, it's a damn cavern, man. How in the hell am I supposed to get through here halfway safely? This is a damn cavern. What the? What in the? Yeah, man. It's just like a road race. You can buy that line if you want to. Okay now, y'all. Now, there's no way I'm riding my bike down this. Look at all these damn rocks. It's steep. You probably can't tell how steep it is, but man. Look here. Oh, and believe me, it ain't even safe walking down this. I tell you. I'm trying to make it. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the proceedings, but I gotta give you a little bit of a backdrop for the footage that you're getting ready to see. Now, what you just saw previously was me going up and over Lava Mountain. And let me tell you something, Lava Mountain is a complete hellhole to go up and over. So after I came down from Lava Mountain, I entered into this little town called Basin. And uh, Basin was definitely good to me. I stopped at a little cafe and I forgot the lady that I talked to. She was so nice. We talked there. But the problem is, once I got to Basin that night, it was around 1030. Um, you know, I had been hurt previously uh, for the last couple of days. And I really didn't make much mileage. And a couple of the people that I was sort of passing and then they would come past me, I wanted to catch back up to them. All three of them had already made it to Butte, which is around 40 miles or so away from Basin. Uh, and the people I really wanted to catch up with was a person named Paul, my good friend, a person named Peter, and Kyria. But I really wanted to catch up with Paul. So, after eating a couple of warm bowls of soup and getting re-energized, you know, got there and based around 10.30, stayed about an hour, you know, and I left about 11.30 that night. So, man, as I'm riding my bike away from Basin, got about eight or nine miles outside of the town, that's when you get ready to make a turn and start going back up into the mountains again. I noticed right before I got back up into the mountains, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed this round, glowing ball. And I said, man, is that the moon? But no, I said, that can't be the moon because it's way too bright and it's way too low. You know, it was right amongst the mountains. But I didn't really look too hard at it. Uh, in the back of my mind, I thought, you know, maybe this is part of a building or a structure and I can just see it from a long ways away. I sort of forgot about it, you know. I started riding through the mountains, riding through the mountains. And I think probably about an hour or two later because I couldn't see it anymore because of the tree cover. Uh, I couldn't see it anymore. But after a couple of hours of riding, it was probably 1.30 or so in the morning, I started coming up a hill. And when I came up that hill, it stopped me in my tracks because I came face to face with what I had seen previously. And let me tell you, it was not the moon. Not at all. You know, it was right down there in the mountains with me. You know, it was very low. It wasn't quite as tall as the mountains that were surrounding me. It was sitting 
pretty low. And uh, I got a very, very good look at this thing, man. And let me tell you, it blew me away. You know, it had the shape of the moon, but it was definitely not the moon. It was like a round ball. It was sort of bluish and transparent. Hey, man. What the hell is that? That ain't the moon. That's... I'd be damned. Is that some sort of UFO, man? What the hell? It's like I can see through it. It ain't no buildings out here either. What the hell is that? But the funniest thing is, man, it had like some carvings on it to where it actually resembled a face. It actually resembled a face. And right in the center of this sphere was this fire. You know, it was like a fire or energy source. And that's when I immediately knew, hey man, this is a UFO, you know. What was funny is, once I saw this UFO, I never not saw it again. It was always somewhere where I could see it all the way until the time I got to Butte. I ended up stopping, taking a picture of it, and uh, doing a little video. And what was funny is when I looked at my phone after doing the video, it looked nothing like it did in real life. And that's when I knew that, okay, it's not going to come across to you guys what I really saw. But uh, the thing is, I did make a drawing of what I really saw. I'm not an artist, so the drawing is not perfect. But it's more of a representation of what I really saw that night. And I have been waiting since I got back home for a full moon to do a comparison to show you guys, you know, what the full moon looked like and actually what the real thing looked like. And uh, let me tell you, when I took the picture of my phone, uh, of the actual UFO, it was so distorted because it was like all this energy was coming off of this sphere. And you can just see the energy coming off of this sphere from the first picture that I took that night. And I said, man, this is crazy. Even though it's not showing you what I really saw, it definitely was not the moon. And so I took a picture with my phone the other day of the full moon and it didn't have that same distortion. I took a video with my phone of the full moon. It did not have that distortion whatsoever. So I'm 100% sure, you know, that this was something from another world, you know. Uh, it look a little bit different than this on video, but it's like a transparent ball, man. And it's not connected to anything. And believe me, it ain't the damn moon. I don't know what the hell this is. This is now this is a full moon with my phone. It's a big difference. I'm just getting this back on camera. One more time. Y'all probably can't tell what that is, but it's a damn UFO, man. It don't look the same on camera as it do in real life. In real life, it's like a, a, a ship, really. This transparent with like a little light 
in the middle of it. And actually, the outside is shaped like a face almost. It's crazy. It's just sitting there silent. It's pretty cool though. I always wanted to see a UFO up close. Man, this is crazy stuff. Everybody's house that I've been passing been having these sparkly lights. And these sparkly lights look just like the UFO that's sitting up here when they get behind a tree or something. It just starts sparkling like these lights. I'm thinking everybody over here know about this UFO. Man, now I came to a field where it's just all these lights out here, man. All these crazy lights that look like stars. This is crazy. It's just lit up out here. And right above, this is where the UFO is. Look like they calling it in or something. I hope these lights showing up on camera. Crazy. Also in the video, you see me talking about uh, going through the mountains and I ran across a few houses. And the GoPro, it really pisses me off because the GoPro doesn't show you how tall uh, inclines are and it doesn't show you how um, the declines are as well. You know, it always wants to even things out. And as far as, you know, taking film with my GoPro of the UFO, it made the UFO seem like it was so much further than it really was, you know. It was really right up in my face uh, most of the whole time, you know. Uh, you know, as I started moving on in the journey, uh, you will see me uh, show a video of some lights that were in the field. Now, to your naked eye, you might think like, Jay, nah, these lights are just buildings and lights are coming off the buildings. No, it wasn't. It was just a field of lights that was just set up. And you can't really see the lights once again on the GoPro footage. You can't see them how I how they really looked in real life. Because in real life, they look like sparkling stars. I don't know where they bought these lights from. They look like sparkling stars. Not like a star you would put on a Christmas tree, but like legitimate stars. And as I said in the video, whenever I would pass by the UFO and it would get behind some trees, it would start to sparkle like a star it'll get distorted whenever you go behind trees and those lights looked exactly like the ufo when you see it behind trees and i promise you that's why i made the correlation of you know what it seems like the people the community that was there knew about this ufo and actually were putting these lights up to call it in and maybe the town or whoever knows about ufos and it's almost like they set up lights to call this UFO in. Yeah, Butte, that's Butte right there. I've been waiting to see this site with my own eyes to be getting ready to ride over Butte and pull in. That's sweet, man. Butte, here I come. Yeah, baby. Look at Butte from up top, baby. They made me go another route. Good old Butte. 
It's a beaut to see beaut from up here. And man, I'm driving, I mean, I'm riding my bike uh, up until the morning because the ride actually took me from like 11.30 to like 6.30 that morning uh, to actually get to Butte, you know? So it took me a while because once again, I was moving slow. Everybody was going faster than me. Uh, I wish I had the camera that I'm using now where I could have got a really good close-up of this UFO. I believe I would have been able to show you what I saw. But I remember as the uh, sun started coming up, this UFO wasn't getting any dimmer you know it wasn't going anywhere i'm thinking like man is this thing going to disappear you know now that the daytime has come but as you can see on the video it's still within sight you know it's sitting right there for people to see a couple of times some cars passed me uh when it started getting to be morning time and i'm wondering like is anybody going to stop and and notice this ufo but the couple of cars that passed me they didn't stop. It's like they didn't notice it like I did. But let me tell you something. I had got a very good rest in Helena. Uh, make no mistake about it. You know, I know what I saw. Uh, and I'm telling you, it was not of this world. Now, I told my mother, I like, you know, Mom, if I ever was sitting right next to an alien, like right now, still nobody would believe it because... You know, that's just how this world is. They're going to always think you're making things up. You know, it's, it's documents of presidents talking about UFOs and uh, people not believing them. So, of course, nobody's going to believe me. But let me tell you something. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Uh, and I remember when I got to the top of Butte, you can see in the video, I even say, you know, look at the view of Butte. I didn't realize that the UFO had actually sort of moved, you know, from where it was. It was always towards my right as I got closer to Butte. It was towards my right. But when I did that last little video showing the, you know, the top of Butte, you know, when I got to the top of Butte, it was actually in front of me. And I'm telling you, I know a lot of you are going to be like, hey, Jay, that's just the moon. No, it was not. It was not the moon. You know, it was not the moon. What you're seeing is a legitimate UFO. Like I said, it was transparent. It had like a face on it, and it had like a fire in the middle of it. I got home, and I started doing a little research, and I didn't realize that Montana, you know, was a hotbed for UFO activity, you know. And when I saw that, I said, you know what? Now I can really, really believe what I saw was a UFO. And um, the other thing is, I never actually saw the real moon that night. I never actually saw the real moon that night. You know, I was looking for it like, man, where's the legitimate moon? I never saw it. I did talk to another cyclist, uh, and she told me that she did see the moon somewhere that night. But you know what? If she got a glimpse of what I was looking at, and thought it was the moon, I'm here to tell her, that was not the moon, you know. It was definitely something uh, that was out of this world. Well, I left Butte and the aliens behind. Made my first major climb out of Butte, about, uh, about 26, 2700 feet. And I'm looking at a hell of a scenery right now with all these mountains in the background. Let me adjust this. It's a beautiful scenery out here. Will you stop all that beeping? It's a beautiful... Stop it! It's a beautiful scenery, man. Beautiful scenery. Okay, guys. You see, I'm pushing my bike again because I'm headed towards something called Felisa Ridge. One of the steepest parts of the Tour Divide. Normally people push it up one side like I'm doing and push it down the other side because it's so damn steep. So we gotta be getting there in just a second, man. We're gonna see what it look like. We're up 
approaching Felisa Ridge. I can't lie, it's beautiful over here. But I know this ridge is gonna be scary as hell. Please a damn well read. Oh, Okay guys, we're approaching the edge. I had to get off this damn cutthroat early. Cause I'm telling you, these cutthroats, when they sniff a downhill, they'll take you over the edge. So here we go, we're approaching it. Here, it's like an immediate drop off from right here, from what I'm looking at. Yeah, I can barely stand up right now. Damn Twitter vibe, I was trying to kill you, man. I promise you. Let's see. What the hell is over here? It's a struggle. I'm damn near falling out already. They done lost their damn mind. Man, this shit crazy. Excuse my language. Yep, yep. It's just getting steeper and steeper. You know, I done chickened out on a lot of stuff on the Twitter vibe by walking the bike. And I see no reason to break that trend right now. I think I'm gonna keep my chicken feathers on and keep right on walking down this damn hill. Felisa Ridge. It's keeping with Rocky Mountain tradition. We got a bed of boulders right in the way. So even if I wanted to ride, in a way, I'd be riding through this right here. No way. Now, I don't know if y'all can tell, but we've just entered the world of a straight drop off. I'm gonna tell you, sitting at home, looking at my cable TV right now, it's looking like a damn good option <laughs> over this. I I'm gonna have to turn this off because, hey, I gotta concentrate. Yeah, man, after a few minutes of doing this, whoever came up with this part of the route, Need a swift execution. Cause this, well, it's just about as ridiculous as most of the other stuff. Man. The sound y'all hearing is my bike sliding down even though I got the brakes on.
And there you go. Felicia Reed. Good riddance. I promise you. I never want to do you again. I promise you coming down this thing was a a life and death type of risk. I took one foul, but I made it out alive. Thank God. Oh boy. Right after Fleece Ridge, I took a pretty bad foul. Uh, hurt my leg a little bit, but I really, excuse me, messed up the handlebars on my bike and uh, the arrow bars. Uh, I think I can continue. I just gonna, I'm gonna have to find a bike shop. Uh, just one of those times I probably should have walked my bike again and I thought I was gonna be okay. So uh, thank God I'm still alive. Bike pretty messed up. I'm just gonna pray that this didn't end my tour divide. So still rideable right now. I'm gonna try to find some help uh, in one of these next stops. So as of right now, I can't do nothing but keep going. Hey guys. I want to thank all of you for checking out my video, a beautiful disaster, the story of my 2024 Tour Divide. I appreciate all of my supporters, everybody that's had my bag, been watching my dot. You know, I hate it that I had to get scratched in this year's Tour Divide, you know, because of a crash. Uh, but it was a hell of an adventure. I learned a whole bunch and I hope to do it again next year a lot better a lot wiser and uh i just hope that you know i showed you some of the mo most realistic parts of the tour divide and believe me that part about the ufo is no joke i really saw a ufo up close uh, i'm not asking you to believe it but let me tell you ufos and aliens are definitely real. I always felt that, but after what I saw, there is no question. What you saw in the video is not what I saw in reality. In reality, I saw a light blue ship that was translucent. You can sort of see through it. I saw like a fire in the middle of the ship for its uh, power source. I saw a face carving on the outside of the ship and it was just absolutely mind blowing. As far as the race, uh, I didn't have fun on any of it because I always felt like my life was in danger. The only time I had fun is when I was meeting people and uh, talking and conversing or even getting to my hotel, having a nice little rest. But when I look back, everything was absolutely amazing. You know, it's even one part uh, of the race where man, uh, something else crazy and supernatural happened. I felt like God sort of took over for me and uh, he was riding the bike for me. Uh, one time I was actually going up a hill and I wasn't even pedaling, you know. It's like God was pedaling for me, so. So many things happened on this trip that were absolutely amazing. Uh, met a lot of great people. I've said it before, my friend Paul. I met a cool guy named Billy. I met the guys, I think from Switzerland, I think. Uh, I'm not, I might be mistaken, but they were just touring the race. They actually gave me some food when I was bonking one time. Uh, I met so many great women. The true treasure of the Tour Divide are these strong, powerful women. Uh, I just met a ton of great people who offered to give me food when they thought I was uh, sick on top of a pass going to Helena right before I went to the Llama Ranch. So many great hearted cyclists out there. Uh, even when my race ended in Wise River, I met a great guy named Rogue who introduced me to Dave. Both of them tried to help me get to bike shops so I can get my bike fixed and Rogue even brought me home, but not home, but he brought me to Butte so I can get home, you know, after I decided that my race was over. Overall, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not trying to scare you from doing the Twitter vibe, but just don't fall for the fantasies 
that is all fun and games. It's life or death out there. You're riding on hard, sharp rocks, coming down mountains, or either going up mountains. It's super dangerous out there. But if you have a calling in your heart, and you feel like you want to do it like me, by all means, give it a shot. But make no mistakes. It's super dangerous, and you could get hurt or even killed on the Twitter vibe. But with all that said, I'm glad it exists because it helps you push your boundaries, find out what your limits are. And you know what? You will be stronger after you get done. Whether you finish the race or whether you just finish part of the race, it's gonna be good for you. But just remember, it's no joke. Don't listen to Lil Wilcox, even though I love her. And even my good guy, Ryan, who always, you know, Ryan Van Duzel, who always tries to make everything seem beautiful and great. This Tour Divide, if you're doing the race, it's ultra dangerous. And it could be life-threatening. So make sure you know those things before you enroll in this event. And with all that said, I think I will probably be back for 2025 to try to do what I didn't do in 2024. And that is to finish the race. So with all that said, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button, you know, to my channel, watch my adventures, you know, become part of the family. And most importantly, I appreciate you for taking the time to check out this great adventure. I appreciate you, I love you, but as of right now, it's been me, Jada Aki and Heffner. And all I want you to do is remember one thing, if you ever have to do anything, or if you ever have to go anywhere, all you have to do is get on your bike and take a ride.